welcome everybody uh, to our business brief luncheon here with the Maumelle Area Chamber of Commerce. So let's get it kicked off, if you will, if you'll uh, stand, and we'll do a Pledge of Allegiance, and then we'll uh, go ahead and bless the food that half of you have already eaten. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, if you will, bow your heads. Father, as always, we thank you for another day. We thank you for the uh, opportunity to get together. We thank you for the freedom that you've provided for us, especially uh, concerning the economy and the business world that we're all involved in here in America. And uh, we just pray your guidance and your leadership in all that we do, blessing our businesses and blessing our families. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, have a seat. Thank you. So let's get into our guest speaker. Jennifer Long is here with us today. We're glad to have her. She's the executive director of the Children's Protection Center in Little Rock and the Vice President of the Children's Advocacy Centers of Arkansas. She has served as the Executive Director at the Children's Protection Center for the past four years and has an extensive background in coordination, event planning, and fund development for nonprofit organizations here in the states and abroad. Here in Arkansas, she has served as the Development Coordinator for the Allen School and as Executive Director of the Arkansas Foundation for Skin Cancer before she moved into child advocacy. Prior to 2007, Jennifer's Master in Public Administration from the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, as well as her Bachelor of Arts in Communication from the University of Central Arkansas, have served her well in uh, served her well as a founding board members of the CAGA, right? CAGA City International Cultural Exchange Association in Ishikawa, Japan. I got it. And an English teacher at the, for the Ishikawa Board of Education. So both of these organizations allow Jennifer to help others develop an understanding of the diverse cultures and the people living in these cultures. So join me in welcoming Jennifer Long. Thank you guys for letting me come and speak to you today. So um, what I'm gonna talk about is not an upper. We're gonna be talking about something a little bit difficult but it's something that's uplifting. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the things that are kind of sad in our community and the way our center responds to that. And um, Julia's gonna help me, she's gonna, you'll see me kind of point at her to go through that. But the Children's Protection Center is a nonprofit organization, you can go flip through, that, um, whose mission is to coordinate child abuse investigations so that we minimize the trauma to a child, okay? Child abuse is rampant in our community. It's rampant in the United States. Um, and I know the press is starting to cover that a lot more these days, and so it's, it's a topic that a lot of you may have already been hearing about. I'm going to go next. But in our community, in Pulaski County alone in 2015, more than 1,000 cases of severe physical and sexual abuse were reported. And by severe, I mean those kinds that leave marks, those kinds that this isn't inadequate food or inadequate supervision. So there are more cases that are reported for those kinds of neglect, sexual abuse that we're talking about in our community. Now, a thousand are reported, so that means there are a thousand investigations. And not all of them are, are true, not all of them are considered true, but it's a thousand, those are a thousand kids, the thousand cases that our investigators are having to go out and talk to these children about very, very personal information. I'm gonna go to the next one. So our center in 2008 was started by our community because of this large number of children that they were investigating. At that time, when a child would report abuse, I'm gonna use a child up at the top, her name is Robin, just as an example child, to give you an idea of the, of the path a child would have to take through our process before a center like ours existed. In 2008, Robin went to school. She was living with her uncle. Her parents were living with her uncle because the parents um, had lost her job. And so the uncle was providing food and shelter for this family, and Ro the uncle was hurting Robin. And so Robin finally had the courage to tell her teacher. It's very common that Robin wouldn't tell her parents. Often children don't tell their parents when they're being abused by someone else. So Robin told the teacher, and the teacher talked to her, was shocked, horrified, and then the t principal talked to Robin. And then the counselor talked to Robin. And then they called their local police station. A lot of local police uh, police agencies don't necessarily have the personnel that responds specifically to children. So in some smaller communities, investigators or police officers will respond, the same will respond to theft that would respond to child abuse case, okay? So this police officer would show up and sometimes the police officer at that time would be in full uniform. Sometimes the officer would have a sidearm and talk to Robin, sometimes out in the police car, sometimes that 
police officer would talk to Robin in the teacher's lounge. Um, and then Robin would go to their pediatrician to make sure she's healthy and that she um, and to get the services she needs. But that pediatrician couldn't collect evidence. So Robin got to talk to the doctors and nurses there at that clinic. And then she got to go to another clinic and talk to the doctors and nurses there while she had a medical exam that could collect evidence. Then she would talk to DHS employees, and then she would talk to prosecution. She would talk to the mental health folks. So by the end of this entire process, it was taking weeks. Robin's family, who's shocked by what's happening, is having to cart her around to all these different agencies. And Robin had told her story about 15 times. And what we know when you're young, when you're six, and anyone that has children, your story changes a little bit. It's a cognitive development thing, but it doesn't mean Robin's story is wrong, it doesn't mean she's lying, but a green shirt turns into a pink shirt. These little changes affect the outcome of an investigation. Also, every time Robin was telling her story, she's talking about parts of her body that we're not comfortable as adults talking to, even our close friends and family. And so that was traumatizing to Robin. She's talking to strangers about her body. And then what's more is all these agencies were doing the best that they could, they're doing great jobs in responding to this, but they really could, weren't working together. Some of the agencies might talk to each other, but as far as a really whole, like a, a overarching collaborative approach, they weren't talking to each other. There was no mechanism for that to happen. There was a national movement at that time, the Children's Advocacy Centers. It started in Alabama, and it was growing. And in our community, in Pulaski County, there were some key players that thought, you know, we want something like this. Go to the next one. And it's something like this, where Robin and her family come to one place, one place for them to get all of the services that they need to respond to the investigation, respond to the abuse in an investigation, but then also for Robin to get all the services that she needs. Because what's happened to her is very unique. And it's not as easy as just saying, we're going to go to our pediatrician and just put her into therapy somewhere. She needs an overarching response where all of these agencies are working together for her well-being and her family's well-being at that time, too. So the community, this, was, this included local police departments that had seen this going on in other jurisdictions. It included Arkansas Children's Hospital. It included some mental health folks in our community. Back in 2008, knew they wanted something like this to exist for Pulaski County. So we call it kind of a one-stop shop for Robin and her family. Now Robin gets to come to the Children's Protection Center. She gets forensically interviewed. So she gets to talk to a forensic interviewer who is trained to talk to children on their level, at their cognitive level, in a non-leading way so that we get a really good product for prosecution. But at the same time, remembering that really Robin's well-being is what we're here for. We're not here for prosecution. We're not even here for the investigation. We're here to make sure that Robin is going to heal from this experience. You want to go to the next one? So our approach is to work with that investigation so that Robin and her family come to our center to get that forensic interview, and we record it on a DVD, and all of the folks that need to be there to see it are in a different room observing the interview. But Robin's only talking to one person. We record that. We make as many copies as we need. But while Robin's talking to our forensic interviewer, she is, her family is being connected to services through our family advocacy program. And Robin's family needed a lot of services. They had no place to live. They didn't have anywhere to go. They had no food. They had very little clothing. Robin and her family were traumatized by the event. They had no belongings that they could go back to the house and get. And so our advocate comes in and says, okay, we're going to find shelter for you. We're going to hold your hand through this process. We create relationships with all of the other awesome agencies that we have in our community that provide those kinds of services and provide them in a specialized way for Robin and her family. So we helped Robin. We helped her find get into a different school because she's now zoned into a different school and there's paperwork and it's craziness to do that. We found her mental health therapy for her and her family. We have, and we provide mental health therapy on site at our center. We um, found shelter for her. We helped her with Habitat for Humanity so that they could be, find a house for themselves. We helped mom find job placement. Whatever we have to do to make sure that family is strong and healthy so that they can support Robin is what we are going to do. You can go to the next one. We work as a team, so we are the kind of the, the linchpin, the center of all of these folks that have to respond to child abuse, and you can see here. We work with almost all, almost all of our local police departments. So we do work with Maumel, the Maumel Police Department. We work with Sherwood. We work with Jacksonville. We work with the county, and we work with Little Rock. North Little Rock <laughs> is the only one we do not work with. Um, yes. I'll have to remember. There we go. Okay. Um, 
We also work with DHS. We work very closely with DHS on their cases. We work with state police. They investigate these cases on the maltreatment side, while the criminal investigation is also going on with the police departments. We work with Arkansas Children's Hospital very closely with them. We work with mental health professionals as well. Um, at our center right now on site, we provide the forensic interviewing program, the advocacy program, we do community outreach. So now we're out talking to teachers so that they know that they don't need to question Robin when she first comes to them and tells them. We talk to them about how to report that abuse to the appropriate authorities. Um, we talk to the counselors about how to respond to that as well. So we do community outreach and education. And then this summer, we're moving into a space that's gonna more than double our space. And we're gonna be offering medical exams on site. That's the one thing. We, all, we have to do our medical exams now two blocks away. And that's just a little bit more traumatic for Robin because she's having to come to our center for a forensic interview and then having to walk down the road two blocks and her family has to fill out new information for HIPAA and those kinds of things. So in July and August, we're gonna be moving to a new location that's gonna allow us to do the medical exams on site, which is very exciting for us. We're gonna be a full one-stop shop for Robin and her family. Next. So this gives you a kind of a glimpse into what our forensic interviewing program is. And the forensic interview is incredibly important for us because it gets those children to our center. It gets the investigative agencies that are responding immediately to these cases of abuse and the child comes to our center and we're able to help that family. So our interviewer is trained. She, she talks to kids all day, every day about these kinds of things and she does it in a very non-leading way. Um, it, it results in higher conviction rates for us. We know this nationally. We get better disclosures from children because of this, because it's in a non-leading way. There's a, there is a, um, a process for these interviews. It is not interrogation whatsoever. It's very open-ended. There's a lot of rapport building at the beginning where we're just talking about things that are not traumatic. And then we move into the more difficult topics. We make the digital recording. Another thing that we're going to get with our new move is we're going to have two interview rooms, which we need. One that's going to be geared more for young children and one that will be geared for teens. Right now we see children between the ages of 3 and 17. We also work with um, adults who are intellectually disabled. And so they also make use of our center. Next. With our family advocacy, like I said, we just are there to help that family and support that family in any way that they need. We guide them through the investigation. We do extensive follow-up. Some of our families just need help for the first three months. We get them mental health, specialized mental health therapy. We get them connected to the other services that they might need that are more immediate. And then they have really good support sometimes. They have great family in the community. They have a church family. And so they may not need us for very long. Then we have other families that have nothing. They have no support. And we work with those for years. We have families that we're still with three years later right now, that just helping them and supporting them with the services that they need. We connect them to services like mental health, legal services, immigration services. Our forensic interviewer is um, a native Spanish speaker. And so people from all over the state actually use her, especially because we are located on Children's Hospital campus. We rent our facility from them. So that when children come for services at the children's hospital, if they are Spanish speaking, our interviewer can interview them actually in Spanish. Even children that you think speak English, when it comes to talking about their body parts, they don't know the English for their body parts. And they're not comfortable speaking in English about those things that happened. And so it's wonderful that our interviewer can provide that. But we help with immigration services as well. Next. So to give you an idea of what we did at the Children's Protection Center this last year, we did um, conducted 305 forensic interviews, 311 families are receiving advocacy, and we referred 196 children to therapy. And our therapy program is really awesome because we are able to not just provide therapy to that child, because when abuse happens, it happens inside a family. It affects all the family members. It can affect the siblings. It can affect the parents. So we do therapy for all of those folks involved. It's not just that one child, okay? And so we are very proud of our therapy program, and that's new for us in the last year, something that we've added on site. So funding sources. We are entirely nonprofit. We get all of our money through charitable contributions and grants and fundraising. Um, and so this gives you an idea of how we do what we do. We are an office of three people. Uh, three full-time, and then we have two regular volunteers that come in. So there's me as the executive director in fund development, and then we have our forensic interviewer who also does our community awareness and outreach, and then we have our family advocate who is our backup interviewer. And we share this. We have no reception. We all, we're receptionists. We clean the office. We do it all ourselves. But to give you an idea, this is how we are funded. So um, in Arkansas, there is a beer tax. And a penny from every beer that you drink goes to children's advocacy centers in our state. 
Okay, so please enjoy a beer. <laughs> <laughs> there are 14, there are, um, 14 other centers like ours in the state. They're all private nonprofits, but they run very similarly to how we are run, and they're in different communities in our state. We are still woefully um, uh, underrepresented in the more rural parts of our state, which is really sad. So there are, there are some children that have to travel almost two hours to go to a children's advocacy center in Arkansas. Um, we also have funding through a federal grant through the Victims of Crime Act. Um, it always seems like that's going to get cut, but somehow every other year it comes back and we're okay. But it, um, So we do get some money from that. The United Way is a wonderful supporter of us, so when you support the United Way, we do get some money from that. They're helping us a little bit with our medical equipment for our new building. And then we raise money through individual donations, of course, and organized fundraisers, which there's one, our largest one we actually have here in Maumelle, and I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. But And then we have a state grant that provides most of our mental health um, services as well. Um, as as we start uh, incorporating the medical program into our center, there's going to be a considerable expense for us. So we're looking at state funding for some of that as well. Um, earlier, I was talking about um, to uh, the, the TV station, I was talking about how to respond to child abuse. And um, this is something we really talk to to everyone. Not everybody in our state's a mandated reporter. That number's growing. Every year the legislature, um, or every other year, the legislature is adding more people to that list. But if you are a volunteer, you work at a church, if you work with children, if you work at in any schools, even as a volunteer, you are a mandated reporter. I wish everybody in Arkansas was a mandated reporter. So if you suspect child abuse, just suspect it. You should call the child abuse hotline. Not all sus suspicions are investigated. Sometimes it doesn't meet the level of an investigation, but there are people who are trained to make that decision and we're not. So it's very important if you suspect child abuse to get as much information as you can, child's name, location, and to call that number to um, report that abuse and let the authorities decide if there needs to be an investigation and how to handle that. Are there any questions about child abuse in our community or how the center responds to that? None at all? So um, no one's forced to use us, okay? We have to make partnerships, and agencies have to say, you know what, we believe in what they're trying to do. And it's a hard decision, especially for investigators, to become a part of this collaborative approach. One of the reasons I think investigators are so great at their jobs, detectives, is because they're naturally suspicious of everything. Mm -hmm. And so there is an issue, so it's just, it's, it's trying to overcome those hurdles and collaboration is not something that's not usually their strong suit and that's probably why they do such a good job at times. So we really haven't been able to jump over that hurdle at this point. They, it's, they don't hate us in any way, but to come to our center means you have to collaborate with all those agencies. And that's hard to do for some, if that's not a part of your culture, and that's just not a part of their culture. We work with, I mean, you know, we have, a, we have communication with them and it's open, there's no animosity. But our job, and, and we haven't always had all those partners. Little Rock used to not be on board you know, the county wasn't always on board either. And so it's just personality issues and trying to get everybody to come together and play nicely in the sandbox. And that can be difficult. Um, and as business owners, I'm imagining you guys can understand how that is hard when you're balancing all the different personalities and making sure everybody's getting along. And, and our center is put in a really unique situation because it's our, we have no authority whatsoever over any of the agencies that we're managing. So just trying to get everyone to play nice is hard, but it's worth it. And in the end, all those agencies really are, and everybody that gets involved in these kinds of cases, they're there for, for, the, for the child. And, and, and maybe their goal, their end goal might look a little different. Maybe it's putting the bad guy in jail or, you know, getting a great case, prosecuting a great case, or, you know, trying to find a placement for the child. But they can all, they're all doing such great work that really when we work together, it's just a better product for that child. It's a better outcome. And th these, the, this type of abuse has very long-lasting effects on children. It can, if there aren't those interventions that are put in place. Children kind of know bad things happen, and, and, that, and that's why, when I, it's, it's interesting when I tell people what I do, that I work for the Children's Protection Center. Oh, what's that? Well, we work with children who've been physically and sexually abused, and the first reaction was like, I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not, I'm not sorry. It's terrible what's happening to these kids, but it doesn't have to define them. And we get to be at the Children's Prote Protection Center, we get to be a part of that story. The part that says, yes, this bad thing happened because someone is made a bad decision, it's their fault, it happened to this child. But we get to be a part of saying, that's okay, you can move on from this. We can make you whole again with your family. 
We can make your family supportive and helpful for you. And so we get to be a part of that whole story and that's uplifting and that makes all of us, you know, all, we have that calling and, and to use our skills in that way. So it's exciting for us. Any questions about child abuse in general? No? All right, can we go to the next one? So I talked about the River Cities Dragon Boat Festival. I want to kind of talk about it a little bit more. I've mentioned it briefly and talked at the table a little bit about it. But um, we, four years ago, when I first came on, we were looking for an event that hadn't been done. And just to give you an idea, the CPC, when I first was hired, had a budget of $75,000, and I was the only employee. Um, and we needed to raise money, and we needed to get our name out. People don't talk about child abuse. When we have people that come to our center, they don't exactly go out to anyone and brag about it the next day, okay? So people don't know we exist unless you've come to our center, and our agencies know that we exist. And so we really wanted a venue, a, a platform, to be able to reach as many people as possible, knowing we had very few staff. Um, so we had heard about a dragon boat, the, the sport, the dragon boating, which is an international sport, actually, and a lot of the U.S. cities that are along any kind of waterway have teams. Portland does, Houston does. Um, so we, we kind of contract, we looked at some other areas that were doing similar things. Arkansas had never done anything like this, and, you know, in central Arkansas, we have so many galas, we have so many golf tournaments and 5Ks, so we were looking for something unique, and dragon boat was it. So we decided to put on this festival. These boats are 44 feet long, we put 20 people in them, and they paddle 200 yards. And our first two years, we had it at Victory Lake in Burns Park, and last year we moved it to Lake Willistine here in Maumelle. And it was the best decision we ever made. Not only because Burns Park was underwater last year, and we would have been completely <laughs> up a creek, but um, we, Maumelle has been so fantastic. The Parks and Rec and the city have been so welcoming to us, and I just, you know, having worked a lot with North Little Rock and Little Rock, and those are great cities too, and we get support from them, but it's just a different feeling here. And we were just welcomed with open arms. I can't say enough good, good things about Philip Rayburn, who's with Parks and Rec. I mean, it's, they have been so wonderful to us. We are so happy to be here. So we're doing it again this year at Lake Willistine. It's going to be on May 20th and 21st. Um, we have about two to 3,000 people that attend this event um, in the last few years. It is designed as a team event. And I'm going to show you a, um, real quick, if you'll give me just 30 seconds, I'm going to escape out of it. Can you escape out of that? And then click the window that's behind and hit play. And then you might need to double click to make it big. So this is our promo video. So you see Lake Willistine right there. So this is what the boats look like. There are 20 people, and a lot of our teams are companies. They use it as their team building event or their company picnic because as these, as these races are going on, we're tailgating over on the shore. And so people come and they grill out, and you can see the teams there. You can see some of what they're, yeah, they're grilling out here. That's Blue Canoe. That's Centers for Youth and Family. Last year, the Maumel team took first place. That was, and they were a first year team, and it was close. So you can, and you can see here the tailgating areas is early in the morning. We have food trucks that are out on Friday and Saturday. Um, the boats and the paddles and the life vests are provided. Um, and then we have a professional coach that comes, and they're the ones that are on the back, and they steer your boat. But you, there are just some more shots. Pool Boy from Alice 107.7 MCs the entire event for us. Um, and you can see the coach back there. But that's what this is. And what, what it's been able to do for us is really reach a lot of people because I'm able to go and talk to these teams. I talk to teams of 20, and then they all raise money and tell everybody else about us. And so they're talking about us too. And it's really been effective for us because we're using the community to talk about what, we, what we're doing and to talk about child abuse. And at this event, I know you think child abuse is so sad, but at this event, we're talking about what the hope and healing that comes from what the center is able to provide. And so it, it's really been a wonderful um, growth for us. Our first year, we raised $60,000, and our second, we raised 90. Last year, we raised 116, and our goal this year is 125. And all of the money this year is going to go towards that medical, pro our growth that we're going to be having this summer. So. Um, but we are looking for teams, team registrations. If this is something that your company might be interested in, I'd love to talk to you about it afterwards. 
or just come out that day. On May 20th is a big party that evening. We're going to have a bag attorney, and we're going to have um, Pool Boy will be out there. We'll have a DJ also, and then we'll have a big fireworks show at 9 o'clock that night, and all the teams will be tailgating as well. And then on Saturday is the race day, and that's we'll have a lot. The kids' area is huge. We're going to have hula hoopers and stilt walkers and balloon animals and so much stuff going on for families too. So we would love to have you guys come out and check us out and just check out the races. Any questions about the festival? Has any, did anybody go last year from this group? Yeah, okay. Arkansas yes, they do, yeah. Their sponsor, Arkansas Democrat, is a big sponsor. They're sponsoring the Friday night party this year. Any questions at all? Yes. Your presence in pediatricians offices or in the group? To some, yes, some, some pediatricians offices, they know that we exist. Um, we don't take referrals from outside agencies. So they have to come from law, our referrals have to come from law enforcement or state police. Could be from somebody in there with your child or something and then pick up something and then call you? They can call us for information, which happens a lot, and then we encourage them to call the child abuse hotline. But that hotline ensures that all of the people that need to be involved get involved in a case. And so that why, that's why that get, the hotline is so important to be the first step. But so we when we work with pediatricians office, especially in April, April is child abuse awareness month, just about how important our response to child abuse is. Sometimes our response is, can be just as bad as the actual abuse uh, as far as the trauma that that can create for a child. And so it's just talking to people about how and a lot of how before I had this job, I had no idea if my son's friend came and told me his brother was touching him. I, I don't know. I wouldn't have known what to say in that moment. And so we work with pediatricians in the community just about how to respond to that. Where's the new location going to be? It is going to be on Children's Hospital campus as well. It's going to be on 12th and Battery. Um, and uh, we'll be renting that facility from them too. They're really good to us, Children's Hospital is. Um, and so they've raised money to make this awesome facility. Yes? What was the website for the boat races? It's rivercitiesdragonboatfestival.com. I know it's really long, but <laughs> rivercitiesdragonboatfestival.com. We have a lot of teams. We have about 30, we had 37 teams last year. Right now we have 35 that have registered, so I think we're going we're gonna to reach over 40, I'm hoping for. Um, it's really a fun event. It's a good time just to come in, drop in, or just to come out and have a team, too. I'm trying to think of some others. So the, the Maumel team, I know Kimberly Clark had almost gotten a team together, it's, but it was hard for them to get 20 paddlers. Um, but we have BKD is out there, uh, Baldwin and Shell, Arkansas Children's Hospital has a couple of teams that come out, Rich Logistics. There are a lot of companies that come out and use this as, um, like I said, as their company picnic. And they, or they get their clients on the boat. I know BKD gets a lot of their clients to come out and paddle. They can still come. Everything is free. We have um, a, a food, the food truck village is set up for those folks that come out and don't have a team that they're attached to. But it's really easy just to walk up and make a friend, and someone will hand you a hot dog or a hamburger. I mean, I mean, it's insane. But um, but there'll be food tr food trucks for those spectators that come. But parking is free. The kids area is free. Um, the only thing you would have to pay for is the is the food at the food trucks. But. Um, so and everybody's welcome just to walk up. The races start at 9 o'clock on Saturday. KARK has a team this year, as does Alice 107.7, and they're going to have a special race at the beginning. So um, DJ Williams will be out there. He's going to be on a boat. So um, US Bank has a team. It's, it's a lot of fun. So I can, talk, I can go on and on about it. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to you. If you ever want to take a tour of our center, it will take you five minutes to walk through. I am not kidding you, it's so tiny. But um, we are on Children's Hospital campus. You can look up um, Children's, or I can give you my card after this if you'd like it, but I would love for you to come see our center and see how we are able to provide these services. Great, All right, thanks. Thank you very much.